Hello everybody, welcome and thanks to Crown Resorts. Crown, here's where things get interesting. And Lexus of Blackburn, this is Eddie and Jimmy with the uh, ubiquitous Jimmy Bartell mm-hmm. who's taken over my position these days. I, I went to bed last night <laughs> with you, mate. I woke up this morning in bed. There you were again and here I sit opposite you on a Monday afternoon before we get stuck into Footy Classified on Wednesday as well. Mate, congratulations. <laughs> I want to just say this. I reckon you've actually been almost the, uh, the rising star... If you can win the Rising Star and the Brownlow <laughs> in the same year, that's just about you at the moment. You're killing them in the media. Oh, thanks, Ed. I appreciate it. I enjoy yeah. the, the the different work. It's good fun talking about different things. But that's I, the trick, isn't it? I, yeah. That's what I reckon I used to keep saying. Was that, you know people said I was everywhere, but I was doing a, a quiz show and a mm. breakfast yeah, show it's... and doing politics and you know all sorts mm. of things as well as the footy. Mm. I think if you actually just spoke about footy all day, it would drive you insane. It would, and but... it does. You see them by round five; they're all burning out already. This year. <laughs> <laughs> they're no, all you... about to fizz up. I don't know. Mark Roberts would go to gather end. I don't know. Everybody I didn't see him anywhere. There, there's a lot of people there, but you got to be, yeah, as you said, physically fit, ready to go. Yeah. You prepare for it. But uh, as you touched on, hopefully physically, I wasn't there with you when you went to bed and woke up in the morning. No, yeah. but, right. but you were in my heart. <laughs> oh, in my, well, you're that's more that's in my ear than anything that's else. You, then. Hey, uh, by the way, uh, just got a message through from our mate Andrew Moore from Lexus of Blackburn. The new Lexus LBX, which is, right. have you seen it? It looks yeah, so, um, It's amazing. on the road and they're selling like hotcakes at the moment. So Lexus Blackburn has a comprehensive number of demo vehicles for test drive. Oof. So get it and have a bit of a look at them. Joe is our man. Joe is a sensation Collingwood man as well, Joey. So get out Is that there. what makes him sensational? Yeah, well, it's, it gives him a head start. <laughs> so he's there. Uh, Lexus Blackburn, 146 Whitehorse Road. Uh, 98772788 but uh, Lexus Blackburn 146 Whitehorse Road get out and have a look at it it is the small luxury vehicle market that is going off at the moment so get out there and have a look at that Lexus LBX in the meantime Crown is going beautifully they it's, are uh, yeah. looks good food's good Yeah, and you know what uh, it, it's a bit quieter than it used to be but it'll, it'll pump up but use that quiet time yeah. it's you go to the restaurants are absolutely sensational at the moment right let's get into the action Gather round. Gather round. Yeah. What did you think? Oh, I thought it was fantastic. Uh, the whole debate always kicks off. Can we just enjoy the gather round before we start arguing about moving and oh, adding it's, extra it's gather round? Just, I thought when they signed it last year for three years, we could at least get yes. a couple of years yes, without that. all the carry on. It's a great spot. It's a central location. The grounds are central. I know we go play out at Mount Bark and they're talking about one in the Barossa Valley. Fantastic. Mm. Good for Western Australians to come across. Good for Victorians, New South Wales, Queenslanders. Yep. It gives them something unique. Which is great because we do. Well, let's use your term. Uh, everybody's got to cook dinner once. Yep. It's the South Australian teams, Port Adelaide and the Crows. Their chance to put on a nice roast, if if you will, the yeah. dinner. Uh, Turn it on. Uh, yes. Yeah. Um, it's great. It's what, fantastic. What, I heard Lee last night, and he made perfect sense. And uh, there's always this, the battle between the marketing department and the football department. And Lee was saying, well. Possibly uh, so that uh, the, uh, the the South Australians can get an extra free kick of a home game. Possibly um, they should play one of the showdowns there. Now, from a marketing point of view, I go uh, the showdowns are big. That yeah. gives them something extra. If you had the showdown as the last game on the Sunday night, followed by the uh, the the, mm. the concert, and really turn it into something, now that could be something big. However. I still look at it and say, you know what, uh, in a 23-round season these days, it's going well. Just uh, leave it leave it maybe it, for another year. It doesn't make... It you know what I'd like to see? Yeah, that? Well, it doesn't make economic sense, which no. is what you're touching But you know what I'd like to see? Oh. I'd like to see a special draw for Gather Round. Oh, like a... Hmm. Make that an event. Make that an event. Yeah, why not? Make it a, So then it is... It's not Fair. the AFL fixing the fixture. Hmm. Do a special draw. And, you know, if it ends up being Collingwood Carlton or something... Jeez, well, that would be interesting. No, you can't do that. Can I'll, I add just I'll, a couple of points? Can I just take back my own idea? Yeah. I've just workshopped it a bit more. No, you yeah. can't do that. No, but there, there could be a number of um, games that you could have hmm. and maybe you draw it. I mean, obviously, they can't have Collingwood that's, Carlton because that's here and all the, the deals at the MCG are off the back of those things, as I've explained couple, in recent A couple times. of points uh, yeah. I want to add to it because I've been thinking about it a fair bit and yeah. it's always dangerous uh, disagreeing with the statue just here at uh, MCG. Lee, Lee. Yeah, yeah. Um, I must admit, I seem to be agreeing more with him. I don't know if that's... He's very pragmatic man. So I'm getting older or not. A couple of things about it. Gather around in Adelaide has to be in the first six weeks to keep all fans excited to get them over there. Yeah, but, and, and around Easter works beautifully because works you've got time to sp- have your Easter weekend here, then go on holidays. Yep. The other thing, no showdown game. For people who are complaining about the unfairness of a fix, fixture. fixture, 
It's always going to be unfair in an 18 team competition in 23 rounds. As much as uh, the other factors, the economic sense, the economic sense of Collingwood playing here 16, 17 times. Geelong's got 15. their home ground advantage. Interstate teams get true home ground advantage for 11 games. Uh, the, yeah. the grand finals here, it's unfair. The, what you, I'm getting your point f- last night was 100% right. Yeah. Unless we play each other once yes. and extend the finals as we get more teams in, you get close to that, or you play each other twice, hmm. then it's then there's, there's, there's five getting, weeks of compromise, which is really marketing, hmm. then just market I'm, it properly. I'm just getting a little bit tired of everyone clubs, everyone whinging about the fixturing, whether it's we need a best of three grand final or they yeah. get one <laughs> extra home game. Yeah. I'm talking from everyone. I'm not just saying Victorian-centric. I'm no, talking about right. industry, yeah. everyone. Oh, we have to play interstate on our first round. We always have our first game at MCG. Just, Mate, what, what about this though? Why, and moaning why about is it. it always that people find fault with something that's working? Well, the now, numbers are saying that. There's Luke. a million things. You know, we've been talking about the gather round type of concept for, for years. Now everyone wants one. Now, I'll say it again because I think I've got to say everything for about 10 years before it sinks in sometimes. But anyway, gather round works because of everything that works in Adelaide. Yes. Okay? In fact, and largely because it's Adelaide, between Perth. Close, to, close enough to Melbourne, mm. close enough to everyone to go in, and it works, okay? If you want to do something a bit different, then let's have a look at that. Yeah. But I think you can do that by having mini gather rounds. You don't have to be all duck or no dinner. So, for example, let's say Geelong and Carlton go over to Perth and they play Thursday night, Friday night against those two teams. Flip it, right? So you get the big support going over there and you go for a week. Okay, hmm. so you can have two lots of supporters going over for a week and you can do a few different things over there. That works, and I think that works around the place. It's interesting that, uh, I'll throw this up to you, that uh, opening round, round zero, has not been exactly embraced by the people who pay the big check. Foxdale didn't like it at all. Mm-hmm. Okay, so uh, in some discussions that you have at these, uh, these meetings uh, and things, it was interesting... They are more. They would be more inclined to have a big weekend of football during the buy round of NRL. Mm-hmm. Now, we don't want to start scheduling our stuff according to everyone else, but if that's why zero round came up. Yep. So they would prefer going back to the future. The idea of what we did all those years ago when Collingwood played Sydney and broke the record at it at at Homebush and made a fortune for them, and then they wanted to buy Anzac Day and got all fizzed up and excited. They would rather have a big weekend where. And I, I, I won't use Collingwood because people think I'm just talking about Collingwood, but they're the obvious one, right? So I'll say so I'll use Carlton. Let, 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 let's let, let I'll, I'll use Collingwood Carlton as yeah. as you know, and you can intersect whoever's playing well at the yep. time and whoever's going well. You know, Richmond, Essendon, Hawthorne, if they're going all right, Geelong, whatever. But if you played those two teams against GWS and Sydney on a weekend and really made it big, that would be probably get what they want so you've got to they're looking at it from a subscription point of view and uh, they don't reckon that uh, you know a lot of people are asking me even walking down the street is this for points this week with now okay maybe they didn't market it properly i don't i'm open to to opening round i'm not i haven't found a position on it i think we need to do something big in new south wales and queensland but i think we can uh, so not rush time, to it this time the timing's important timing's important because you don't want teams going into that, call it mini round, uh, mm. whatever we coin it, yeah. um, where teams have already shot from the finals. Yeah. So it has to be in the first half of the season. Oh, really. it's got to be early, yeah. Can I ask you a question, yeah. though? Yeah. All the people complaining about the fixturing. Uh-huh. Can you think immediately off the top of your head, a Premier that we walked away and go, you know what, they wouldn't have won the Premiership if they didn't have that additional No, but I can advantage. think of teams that missed the eight. And, but they're uh, not the best side. No, but you, you do live and die as a coach and I get a that. lot of these things on. No, but I'm just saying the, the best team wins I mean, each last, year anywhere. Uh, I reckon uh, Knicks at Adelaide would be lying a little bit easier in bed had they made the finals last year. Not yeah, but they had, they had their gather round and they, I, no, no, I'm they just had saying, the last game. I'm just up. saying the marketing of things, mm. no one takes into account, no one puts an asterisk next to it because, oh, yeah, they had a bad draw or anything else there. No, but it just, it's there. The best so, sides win. I agree. Mm. Yeah, but also making the finals as a currency of its own as well. There, so to mm. your point, uh, no, it doesn't doesn't usually stop anyone winning a flag, but it, it may stop teams getting to a finals position. Okay. That's, but that's that's where it is. 
Yep. I mean, it ha- happens anyway, doesn't it? Yep. If you. Uh, okay. So gather around. We think is great. Yeah. We up. Tick on that. Yeah. I, I'm all for it. All right, uh, now, what they've got to do is be careful not to go the marketing department because there's one thing the AFL World Champions had. It, it, will they ride something, death ride something into the ground? I mean, every time you have a good night, if somebody gets up and gives a worthy speech, then for the next 10 years, it's like going to uh, to mass and getting the sermon, you know. They, they, they can overdo things a touch, the AFL, you know. They, they really got on John Law's old ad, when you're on a good thing, stick to it. Well, they will drive it into the ground. <laughs> now, you do what you don't want to do here in the heartland is teach people not to go to the footy, Okay. So having these weekends where there's no footy, all right, this week maybe, but we've had two in a month now, and I don't think we need any more. And uh, what we need to do here, and I think, uh, and I'll put my hat on from Visit Victoria, is start to look at the marketing of football around just what happens every weekend. And so, I'd, for, for example, I think we should have a real go at uh, looking at the uh, King's birthday weekend yep. um, and get the whole of Australia to come here and go skiing. Let's play on the fact that, you know, we have winter in Melbourne. We don't, you don't get it anywhere else in Australia. Come here, go to, the, you know, go there for Thursday, Friday, Saturday. You know, come down to Melbourne on the Sunday. Have a good day. Monday's the Queen's birthday. Big game, Collingwood in Melbourne. It's going to be a massive game. You get a hundred thousand this year if they they do it properly. Um, you know, they're the sorts of things. I think we need to start looking at the accoutrements around the football. Mm. You know, we have our own rhythms that uh, happen every week, which we love. But there's a few extra things I think we can get to get non-football people to the game. But uh, but you've got to be careful on these things. You know, opening round in Tasmania and all that sort of thing. It all sounds like a good idea, but just uh, just leave South Australia have it. Yep. Yeah, Let I'll, it bed in a little bit longer. No, I'm with you. If, if you can find something but it's different. I thought it was better than last year's. And yeah, I thought, what was the big... What was, well, I think everyone, there, what, how, well, everyone how knew about it. Last year... Everyone was sort of going into it with the usual trepidation. You know, it's like everything's going to be a disaster in Australia until it happens. And everyone goes, oh, this is good. Um, this year, they, I think they actually opened it up more to supporters as well. So one of the things you've got to be careful on is that, uh, you know, the AFL had that big function on the Wednesday night at uh, Penfolds, and this year it was down on the beach. It was great. And you get the shots of all the people walking in. But that could be anywhere, and no one really gives us stuff. <laughs> um, what we saw more of was activations. Mm. Uh, and I, I just loved it. I think... People love going back to Norwood Oval, which everyone will say, is it the right shape for an AFL game and all this sort of stuff? The answer is no, uh, but bad luck. That's what it is for, for one week of the year. So, tell you, you know, what, when I was watching... There's the, Geelong, but they've yeah. built that stadium. No, Geelong's perfect. It's a beautiful <laughs> little ground. <laughs> Cheap. Um, Cigar. <laughs> yeah, well, that's the unique. It's <laughs> as Kevin Kevin Bartlett would say, it's a unique game. It's an indigenous game. It's a quirky game. It is a quirky yeah. game. Yeah, but um, <laughs> I'll tell you what. When I was watching St Kilda Richmond at Norwood Oval, the sun shining, it's beautiful, wasn't it? Um, you imagine a few mates just punching a few cans in the outer. Yeah. Uh, that'd be the way to watch yeah, footy. That's the way to do it. Go yeah. and enjoy that. And I thought the stuff down at Mount Barker was great. Yep, fantastic game of football. And at Adelaide Oval's, you know, just a great stadium to to watch the footy at. So. Everyone's a winner. So I thought it was great the last game, Collingwood and Hawthorne. The place was packed. Put your future cap on. Yeah. So the deal, uh, just say the deal finishes up at Adelaide. Yeah. Okay. So how do, many, does it move? Three years left, haven't they? Yeah. Does well, it move think, to Tassie? Is that, is that the opportunity no, for one one year away and then why come punish back? South, why punish South Australia? No, I, I'm just. I tell you what it. happens in these situations. It's like the federal government, if you're going to get bounced out, they all just the last year they're, they're running dead on you. Hmm. Uh, it's like uh, you know when when the the broadcasters lost the rights a year out and they suddenly they turn up with a brandy box camera rather than, <laughs> you know, they're covering the game properly. Mm. I'd be incentivising South Australia to come up with more. And I know, I mean, I had meetings over there for next year. Um, this year I was involved in doing the spectacular, yep. which we agreed last year, but it was all happening a bit quickly at that stage. And now suddenly it's an extra day and, you know, right, well, everyone wants to talk. We're going to talk about it a bit later. I, I know it's in our rundown from some questions from our audience. But... I, as I said, that's working. Hmm. Grand final works. Finals month works. Anzac Day works. Queen's birth, King's birthday works. These things all work. Come up with something fresh. So when Tasmania comes in, come up with something fresh. Okay? It's pretty fair. I mean, let's, before we get too far down the track on Tasmania, let's see if they can actually build their stadium. Right? Let's see if we can get them in first. In the meantime, Are we gonna get an let's on that stop... Time? But as you're saying, let's stop smothering... Hmm. South Australia. Yep. They did it Let's well. talk about everything that was great about it. The weather was sensational. The grounds were fantastic. 
The activations were wonderful. The Premier got on his, his road show and was great. Uh, he was impressive, the Andrew Premier. Dillon was magnificent in the handball on the footy show he on Sunday. He was really good. He was good. He, he broke the records. No, no, he smashed it. Poor old Gil. He's, Gil, Gil won't leave the house now. He's, no, he's shot. Gil had his John Howard moment. He did. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it did catch his jacket. I've got oh, to give him okay. that. No, he did, oh. but... Poor Gil. But, but he was told to take the jacket off. Yes. He said, no, I'm all right. I can beat this bloke. And do you know what makes a great round? <laughs> Controversy. Yeah, there was plenty of that. Uh, Carlton v Frio. Let's get into it. Well, uh, they're two parts, but they come into one. All right. Now, get, can you ask me, I keep hearing people saying the technology's not there. The technology was there. We could see that it was touched. Yeah, but you wouldn't have seen it in real time if you're an, AF, no, uh, if you're an umpire. No, that's why I have umpires. And then that's umpires in the wrong spots. And I'll uh, say it again. The umpires in the wrong spots. I push for the four umpires, but they won't do mm. the last part of the umpiring, and that is position them in the right spot so the ball comes to them. They all want to run around looking like the, the dorkiest person in the gym, <laughs> right? I don't know what it is about them. Stand on the corners and let the ball come to you. Would they have seen it though on the corners? Because you only got... Mate, it ricocheted. It, it changed direction by... Uh, yeah, down the ground you could see. Terry Alderman couldn't have moved the ball that much. He was very good in a couple Mate, of ashes series, Terry Alderman. Seriously. <laughs> uh, now, uh, I know you're going to say no to this because we've, we've conversed about this. So what I do... Uh, remember, I'm being a little bit agent provocateur here, okay? Okay. Uh, so <laughs> I've noticed this. So, no, but I sit back and sometimes... <laughs> I did look at the stupidity of things in football hmm. at times and go, if I landed from Mars and looked at this, what would I do? Hmm. Well, the first thing I'd do is I wouldn't have the umpire's position where they are, okay? And I wouldn't have one umpire standing in the place where all the ball goes to. Hmm. You know, you'd stand to the side so you could actually get the view. Right? So you'd have two, two hmm. goal umpires. Hmm. Now, you know my thoughts on boundary umpires and goal umpires, yep. and it's been vindicated this year. They are a waste of time, <laughs> okay? They are. They're wasting everyone's time. Put proper umpires in there who can make decisions, who can do it properly. And that cuts out a lot of the grey area that the angles on a two-dimensional television <laughs> you know, that you can't have. And there's only so much a parallax error, error will allow you to be able to have, okay? Including the touch off the boots. So let me put this to you. Why don't we get rid of touched off the boot? Because it's ridiculous. It's well, not well, our game. Okay, so I'll just say this to you. What happened on Saturday or Sunday, whenever the car was? It was an error. No, but what happened? It was touched off the boot. Well, it was touched off his bicep. It was, it, was, it was touched off the boot and it was paid a mark. Hmm. Okay. Now, if that was a rule that the ball had to go 15 metres, okay, if the ball goes 15 metres and you catch it, it's a mark, right? Yeah. Okay, so that's what happened. Hmm. There'd, be no, there'd be no problem. The, yeah, problem the problem is, was it touched? If I said to you, does it matter, why does Aish get rewarded for not smothering properly? for not being good enough to get his hand up in time or quick enough or, you know, the ball was going fast. Why does an inadvertent ricochet make him hero of the day? Because it's not our game, Ed. Uh, yeah, no, 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 no. No, it's not our game today, but in the past it has been our game. All these rules have changed since our game started. The ball up, the, the sacrosanct of the umpire's ball up, <laughs> that's, that's right. only relatively new. They used to just punch the ball into the ground once upon a time. Did you know that? Yes, I did. Did you know that we used to for a long time have... But Last the, touch over the line out of bounds. Did you know that was the original part of our game? Just on your ball up one, the, yeah. the actual result is still the same. The ball's still going up. Not, so, not, so however you do it, no, if an umpire comes out here and decides he wants to punch it, go. No, no, no one's stopping an umpire doing that. He needs to punch it, needs to go along the But ground. no one's stopping anyone doing that. I'm just saying hmm. that if everyone's losing their wig over this, hmm. why wouldn't you just say, okay, if you're, if you're good enough to smother it, fine, okay? Hmm. If you punch it through for a point, it's a point. If the ball bounces off the goalpost and goes through for a goal, which won you a premiership, no one, you know, complained. You want to talk about well Wellingham sitting the post as well? Which one did Wellingham sit? Yeah, oh, oh yeah, I forgot about that one. No, I don't, can't remember. Which yeah, of course one? you can't. Two thousand eleven hit the post. What in the grand final? Yeah. Oh, it didn't matter. You won. Yeah. Oh, thank didn't matter where we won against the Saints. No, I'm not saying that. that but the, the, <laughs> oh, the, I know, but the, <laughs> see, the, you, I'm going to get to this with Joel Selwood. You guys all hear something and you run off on a on a tangent. Let's get the broader <laughs> aspect. What I'm trying to say is if, it, if, if the ball sneaking off the goalpost is causing us a coronary hmm. and wasting time, which is the next... Because what happens is we, we bring in a rule to fix up the old rule. Yep. You know, it's a bit like the old days. If you bring in a rule, you should get rid of a rule. Okay? There's, there's too many rules. This no, used to be a game without rules, and now we've got more rules than the Australian Tax Office. If you want to get rid of all that, just get the ball going through for a goal. Hmm. It gets rid of it all in one go. Okay, it changes the game for one week. They change the game every other day. What are you talking about? They're, they're, they're changing the fundamentals of the game. No one mm. takes a mark anymore. I remember playing the... The best mark this week was taken by a Melbourne Storm player. 
We don't see marks anymore. We don't, uh, you know, you don't see anybody, you, know, well, you can't bump anymore, you can't tackle anymore. Seriously, if Toby Green goes for that tackle, then I don't know what I'm going to do. I'm gonna well, jump close with a few marks, but the balls were too slippery in the jungle. Yeah, the, the balls dogs. were too slippery, I know. Well, <laughs> I, I knew I'd get you on yeah, that. But you know, do George you... Hewitt admitted that actually on 3 AW. Oh, but why, why do we need him to admit it? I, what, do you reckon I make this stuff up? No, I didn't tell. I, I, why, I agree can't with you, just the ball go, is slippery. You know what, Ed's got a point there. Uh, by the way, you know Laura Kane's been out to Sharon and they are looking at whether they kick the balls in. Now, you saw, right, now, you are my witness. You're pointing at me, yeah. On our show, Footy Classified, last Wednesday, I was handed what? The Gather Round Football that looked like a NASCAR with yeah. all the sponsorship With on all it. the sponsors on it. And, of course, it was shined to mm. perfection, wasn't it? Yeah. Because that's what they want. They want this. The marketing department, again, mm. the dichotomy between marketing and football, they want it shiny and pristine. And they have a whole lot more of them. They didn't cancel the amount of balls that we had. When, remember, you couldn't touch a ball because we'd all die from COVID. Yes. Which was not right, but anyway. Yeah. So another fallacy that has come into our game and the knock-on effect is profound. What happened when I threw the ball to you and it, to Matthew It's Lloyd? slippery. Right. Now, when I threw the ball from... It was about this distance yeah. to you on the panel. What happened? It, one really, of the best ball handlers ever. And Matthew Lloyd, Lloyd, one of the best marks. It took us a couple of bites to get it. Lloyd, he dropped it. Mm. Right? Because it anyway, and what was your first reaction? It's slippery. You said, shit, this is slippery. Yep. Quote, unquote. And I said, oh, thank you very much. Can, can I just say something on it? And people will think I'm, I'm mad. But for someone who is as slow as I am, yeah. um, little things matter. So, like, even I'd only use leather football boots because I like the touch on them yep. compared to synthetic boots. Yep. These sort of things matter to me. I was a little bit strange and on. The difference for me with the football mm-hmm. is when you grabbed an, a Sharon or, say, the, let's call it the original Sharon. Yep. When your hands went on it, it this it might sound funny, hands. but it also made this little, yeah. little sound in your hands. Yeah. And people, when you catch a ball... The tackiness. Yeah, yeah you, you kind of feel like a little bit of a suction. Yep. When you try that with the football you threw me the other night, because I wanted to do that little sound or feeling touch, it's like a, like a, you can feel it sliding off your finger pads. Like yep. you've got the old bank teller hands, you know, counting the notes out, like, as they do. But the old footy would like... Make that little pop Mate, sound in your fingers. It's as simple as this. People the, call me mad, but that's no, just how I felt. But I've, I've gone to Sharon and asked mm. them. They, 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 they've told me they put a different coat on it mm. these days. It's a different ball. It's a different shape. The ends are pointy. And you had sweat. You had night time. You, you had mud. Yep. Everyone forgets the mud. That's mm. the other knock-on effect, pardon the pun, on concussion. You used to actually have soft grounds once upon a time, so we weren't mm. bouncing off something like a, a basketball court every yep. five seconds. But... We're going all over the place on this, but they are out there at the moment looking at that. Now, you have a look at some of the games on the weekend. It was fumble ball. Hmm. Okay, You watch the ball doesn't bounce up. That's why the umpires can't bounce the ball as well because it skids. You have a look at them trying to pick the ball up under pressure, particularly if there's any amount of dew on the hmm. ground. The first quarter of any game at the SCG is a waste of time. Um, that, the marks, you, Lordy was asked on the Sunday footy show, well, uh, Lordy, how come this so-and-so got up to take a scream and didn't hold it? Because it's too slippery. Hmm. It's not the ball that we used to have, that used to be kicked in, have the tack off the ground. All that sort of You see blokes now, they, their jumpers are smeared in Tarzan grip and they still can't hold the bloody yep. thing. So why don't we go to the one piece of equipment hmm. that the AFL is duty-bound to provide? All right. And to your point, the one bit of equipment that a footballer has to bring outside his mouth guard is his boots. So why wear synthetic boots on a slippery ball and then wonder why balls are getting kicked out of bounds off the side of the boot all the time under pressure? Yep, it was just a thing for me. Case. Anybody want to argue against me? Get on the line. Well, <laughs> can we finish the Fair second enough. part? The descent. Yeah. The descent from Jordan Clark, who claims uh, yeah. that you know, he was swearing at himself. And, uh, yeah, bullshit. Yeah. Yeah. So, I think what caught people off guard is the fact that we haven't... Descent was cracked down. Yeah. We haven't seen... Well, I remember we were talking... Um, in, in the lead up to footy classifieds the other night, we're going, where's descent gone? Yeah. And we, we saw it a, again. Look, again, two things. This bloke is apparently, according to the former umpire Michael Pell, mm. who I'll address in a moment, mm. um, is a recidivist. Okay, so. He had it coming. Sort of thing, like well, he's, not not as in a revenge way, but like there no, was. No, but if he's, if, he, if it wasn't that time, it'd be another time. If he's given it to you all day and you've warned him, or he's got a, you know, we'll get to umpiring personality umpiring, which is Lee Matthews's quote, 
which I love, <laughs> which was sort of what I was getting to last week before I invoked Joel Selwood's name. No. I didn't realise the blasphemy. Do, do you want to touch on that now or later? No, we'll get to it in a second because right. I'll talk because I spoke to Joel about this. Yeah. I've um, caught up with him. And uh, anyway, um, so he carries on. His teammates knew he said the wrong thing. You could tell that they mm. were trying to usher him away. However, there is a bit of feel in a game. Mm. Okay. Now, the umpire probably knew, because I think one of the umpires called touch, did they? I'd, I'd like to get, I'd love to get the, the oh, audio. I haven't heard the audio uh, yet. So. It just seemed to me that there was enough from one umpire, possibly. Anyway, but you know those things, and it's a critical moment mm. and, and the rest of it. There needs to be just a little bit of feel in the game. Mm. You know, that ball goes back to the centre and we've got a ripping 40 seconds of football. We don't want football by ATO rules. Um, having said that, the player cost his team the game by being undisciplined. Now, that's no different to throwing somebody to the ground. Don't yell at the umpire. So I don't have any problem with the umpires other than maybe they could have let that one I'll tell you what Freo will be through. reviewing after, after they give Jordan a bit of a clip. Yeah. Why is Luke Jackson on that side of the ruck contest? Yeah. Why is he smashing the ball back into the middle of the ground as a ruck contest? Yeah. Go, go, yeah. Back, go back 10 seconds earlier and what is their big... Ruckman go up and drop an absolute put. Who's their big tool? Defender? Tracy drop Tra- back in the hole. Tracy drop feeding him. That that oh, hmm. that's one you 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 know your dad wouldn't talk to you driving home from the under 11s for dropping that no, match. But Freo Freo are good, but they'll have My some. Dad le- wouldn't anyway. <laughs> they'll have they'll they'll have some lessons in their review, which they hopefully won't repeat again. They cocked the up the last five yes, minutes. Yes, hundred percent. There's no doubt about that. So uh, can I just say this? Uh, the umpire who came out, former umpire Michael oh. Pell. Oh, yep. Came out and said that who was it from Freeman again? The, the Jordan Clark. Jordan Clark was a recidivist and all that sort of stuff. Can I come back to Michael Pell? Yes. He was the umpire who's alleged to have given out information so, that was used for betting on the Brownlow. Yeah? yeah, for people who are unaware of his work. Yeah. Okay. Where's that? That's still under investigation. Isn't uh, it? Under investigation. Mm. What That's what I last read. And that was only recently. <laughs> Why didn't just give it to uh, a cadet reporter in a newsroom who could investigate it and have the answer for you by lunchtime? What? What? How much investigation do you need to have? I don't know. We tend to take our time. To well, to isn't this sort of the corruption that we're... I, I would have thought, to be perfectly honest, any situation where there is a hint of corruption or betting scandal with an umpire should be investigated. We should have ASIO on the case or whoever the highest order is. This is and now this guy's. The police are involved. Well, are are they involved or what? Or are they? Or is this one of these ones? Let's just put it over there and we don't want to see it. Oh, delay, delay, and hopefully everyone forgets. Well, everyone forgets. I mean, this guy's—he's forgotten that he's actually in the centre of it and wants to put out. I think uh, quite a provocative. uh, He might have forgotten, but I don't think people have forgotten because as soon as people googled his name, they went. Yeah, we googled his name, but it was interesting that in the reports about what um, former umpire Michael Mm -hmm. Pell said. There wasn't anything in there in in the actual copy that I read that said this is the guy who was stood down for these reasons. I would have thought that was in there. I don't know. It just seemed to me there seemed to be a, a dancing around. I just uh, uh, quite simple. Uh, you know my position on on betting. I'm happy for people to have a bet, but you've got to be absolutely on top of it. I would like to know, and I'm going to follow up where this uh, in investigation into the corruption of the voting so involved that- in the Brownlow medal is at the moment because we're about to get to two Brownlows down the track from it. Two years. So that's the issue. Because he's under investigation for corruption, his comments on Jordan Clark. I would thought would have thought he should just really... Lay low. Hmm. Yeah. 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 Uh, you, you Especially, man- can, I, can I just make the point again? Because yeah. he brought up personality umpiring. Hmm. So his, in what he said, he, he made the point that he remembered him from a practice match. Yep. So therefore, he looked at this guy a bit differently. Yep. Now, if... I keep forgetting his name. What's his name? Uh, Pell? No, the other bike. The Jordan Clark. Jordan Clark. So if Jordan Clark had been Billy Smith out there, would the umpire have paid the, the free kick? Or did they go, we know about you, you've got form, we've had enough of you, bang. Yep, you'd be alert to it. You'd be alert to it. So the point that I was making in relation to Ginevan last week on our show Which and Joel Selwood, mm-hmm. which people have taken the wrong way, 
And I spoke to Joel Selwood, and he was a bit antsy uh, in the first instance. I didn't know what he was talking about, to be honest. And then when we actually got to it, I said, oh, no, that's not what I meant. And we were able to look at it because I've always been a strong supporter of Joel Selwood and the way he plays. And I think he's probably been the player of the last 20 years, to be perfectly honest. Love the fact that he had a, a, a stand named after him. My point was that Joel Selwood and Ginevan very similar in their tactics, yet one has a stand named after him, quite rightly after mm. everything he's done, right, and, and a celebrated career. Yet another bloke who's only two years into his career is getting run out of the game. Yeah. My point was they umpires should be going in without preconceived ideas and paying the free kick as it's there. Yeah. Yeah, now, so if the umpires... If this Michael Pell's putting out that our man... Uh, Jordan Clark. Jordan Clark. Uh, I'm going to have to learn his name. Jordan Clark <laughs> is... Um, He's it, prone it, to that behaviour. Yeah. Or they're looking for it. Yeah. Then possibly he might have yelled at himself. Now, I don't buy that personally, but anyway. when if you do, shut up, mate, because you're under the hammer. Mm. Um, I just don't like that. I just yeah. don't... And Lee Matthews brought it up again. I mean, Jack Ginevan yesterday, if, if, if only you could have put your life savings on here, get a free kick for too high at the first opportunity, you would have put every cent that he had on, in life on it. Well, the, and it, when it came up, it wasn't really a free kick, but they were looking for it. Well, the first one wasn't high, then Mitchell does get him high, yeah, the second one. Yeah, no. Jeez, but there's a few can, high tackles over the weekend. Can I, can I just come back to you? Anyway. Yeah, let's just call it the Joel Selwood Ginneman comparison. Yes. Like, I understand your, your point around tactics, mm. but where people got antsy was it did come across as, well, Joel Selwood got a stand because he did that. No, Joel Selwood, okay. no, no, hang on. Okay, let me okay, finish no, this okay. point. The reason why people got their back up quickly yeah. is because Joel Selwood got the stand because it's 350 games. It's This is a captain's four-time premiership. Yeah, I know, but can you understand why people immediately went, no, no, no. Because no, your reference to the stand yeah. can be perceived as, well, he only got a stand because he, well, he you, gamed the well, system. Well, you've, you've got to, in my mind, you've got to go via Albuquerque to get that position. No, no. When we're I talking don't think about you do. A, no, okay, well, the, but the I, said to Joel, I said to Joel Selwood, I said, well, mate, if, the, if that's what, what you thought or if yeah. people thought that, I, I retract yeah, that, and I apologise. I said to him, oh, no, mate, that's not what it was all about at all. I'm not digging in on this. No, you were if referring... people took that, I would have thought that people, that you can actually have a conversation about a specific topic without having to go into everything else. The specific topic was about personality umpiring yeah. and the fact that one guy is perceived who did that throughout his career hmm. and another kid who's coming in this guy's getting pilloried this guy hmm. with everything else that went with his career deservedly so yeah, gets but there'd the be people who are watching the way Gidevan plays and say that's his first option whereas other people I'm just saying this is this is the feedback because this okay. has been debated for the last week all right? yeah yeah sure and a large portion of people would say yes Joel Selwood would try and get the high tackle yeah. But if he doesn't get it, he keeps playing on and he wins the footy and he's got a body of work yeah, yeah, that yeah. says that it's just not high tackle. Yeah, but we're good. talking about high tackles. Yeah, I, I, I mean, know, I'll, 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 let me go back. What I can you said, see how people well, perceive uh, your comment? I can see if you're barracking and you're wanting to be a nitpicker, yeah, yeah. and you're being really pedantic <laughs> and you're looking to be outraged. If you want to do that, you can find it. Maybe yeah. I should have said Kevin Bartlett when Kevin Bartlett used to use the rule to his yeah. advantage Put until they changed the rule. And guess what happened after that? He went on to be one of the greatest players of all time again. It's the same with Joel Selwood. My point was, he did this. He exploited a rule. He was really great yep. at it. When he got called on it, he changed his play and he became a great player. My point was about the personality umpiring. Lee Matthews' term is 100% right. Hmm. And we've got examples of it. We had examples of it last week when Ginnivan didn't get a free kick. We had another example of it this hmm. week when he did get a free kick. And then we've got this Michael Pell bloke coming out and saying, oh, yeah, the umpires have got a, a black book on who's, who, who's a recidivist abuser. Yeah. Turn up, fresh-faced, new... new. Hey, how are you going to get rid of unconscious bias? Because they read the news and talk about it. Yeah, well, that's okay, but... But, but oh, I'm saying, how are you going to get rid of it? Well, you can't. Hmm. But be aware of it and just... Watch the game. It's yeah. pretty simple. Yeah. I would have thought everyone's talking about how hard it is to umpire. It's pretty simple that if somebody gets hit above the shoulders, it's a free kick. It's called too high. Hmm. I don't know. And, Self people, evident. and here's one. Here's another one. If you jump into somebody's back, that's called in the back once upon a time as well. <laughs> anyway. Hmm. Anyway. Getting me all fired up. Over I stuff know. I know. Just, but I'm just saying. But I just, I, I actually did. I, I was taken aback at people just completely missing the point 
on what I was saying about Joel Selwood. I, I, okay. No. I, 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 can I, I, see. Think, I think the Stan reference got you not in trouble, yeah, well, but that's it, where but it wasn't in trouble. It was making a point. Yeah, I know. You know, when you're in a debate, you actually oh, exacerbate. I know, you know that, but not everyone's open to debate. Right? Lloyd is, <laughs> yeah, because Lloyd is always about, you know, the, the things on the game and it's this and that. And you go, mate. No, you it, ran into trouble with referencing the Stan. Oh, and, well, I've ran into trouble. Not yeah. the, not the bother you. Not the trouble. I spoke to Joel. I said, mate, relax. Well, yeah, that, that's not what I meant at all. And he got it, and we had a drink, and it was great. Then we said, it was just while well, we had a... T- we caught up outside this lunch, and as we sat down, we actually were sitting opposite each other, so I'm glad we sorted it out beforehand. Yeah, I know. He might have suplexed you. He might have. Yeah, <laughs> no. I, I, would have, I would have grabbed him around the neck and he would have fallen over. So that would have been <laughs> Stop it. Hey, by the way, could, could cool. hang on. Let's come back to this. Yeah. Um well, let's stick on media wars. All right. Hasn't that jumped up? Isn't that great? Yeah, I'd, I don't want to be involved, but I'm just enjoying watching it. I'm, at the I'm the same. I'm, I'm enjoying a few people at General 7 getting smashed over Spotlight. <laughs> I've got a, few, got a few, few bones back in the day to pick yeah. on that one. But uh, well, we're referencing. There's uh, nothing better when the media turns on each other. It's, it's fantastic. It's referencing uh, Luke Darcy. Kane Corns went on to Triple M yeah. to talk about his, his boxing bout with Nathan Brown, who's on Triple M. and... Yeah. Damien Barrett, who he works with on the Sunday footy show, and um, just he went on there to and talk Brownie, about it. And yeah. Brownie. And uh, Luke Darcy's uh, started to question him about where he's positioned himself yeah. in the media. It was, on a, it was funny to watch. I think Am I was, the I only one who just thinks, like, don't take ourselves too seriously? Thank you. I mean, I sat next to Luke Darcy for 10 years for three hours every morning. Yeah. And when you, as you know, doing breakfast radio, when you're turning up at five in the morning, you get to know people pretty, yeah. pretty well. Right? <laughs> Das is a, a very deep thinker and he is as empathetic a person as I've met and has actually gone into that area a lot more. He's into his meditation. He's into putting together uh, coaching groups, mm. for example. He's got uh, people like John Aloisi, Craig McRae. Like a real mentorship um, program. Uh, McDonald from the cricket, uh, international people. Putting all these super coaches together mm. and they're actually a self-help group. So he's right into that yep. personal development thing and does a great situation. So I would have thought that, can I have a crack at where, uh, going inside the mind of Luke Darcy? Yeah, go for it. <laughs> right. I reckon Darcy has um, looked at Kane and thought, mate, you're out there, you're punching. Darcy loves the camaraderie of football. Yeah, you being mean-spirited. You're being a bit mean-spirited. You're, being, you're going after people. You know. Now, forever, seven have always you know, been all about, you know, tap the nice guy. Nine's had a bit of edge. I mean, that's, mm. you know, when we took over uh, AFL footy on nine from seven, the first thing I did is, when I was sort of had a, a position of uh, influence, said, no more Dipper on the boundary, no more Neil Curley going, oh, he might have, uh, I don't know, I, I didn't see, I think he fainted, all that sort of stuff. No, put Tony Jones on the boundary and put Peter Larkins on the boundary so we find out what the injuries are. So, you know, a bloke who comes off and Dipper says, oh, I think he got a bit of a corky, you know, and he's actually having his leg amputated. <laughs> um, you know, no more of that caper. We're actually going to hmm. put a bit of journalistic yeah. integrity into this and, and go and ask the hard questions. So that's always been a bit of the, the nine way compared to the, the seven way. So Das, I reckon, has also seen Kane give it to his mate. Trent Cotchin. Well, Trent Cotchin, but oh, that, that, but I reckon it goes back further. I think it goes to the docks. Okay. Okay. You know, and Luke Beveridge has been under a bit of pressure there. Now, Das is the director of footy there, so, you know, and his son's playing it. So all those things come together. But I reckon what happened was Das then went to the, the gym, <laughs> the famous gym session now, yeah. and he's seen Kane, and Kane does, you know, he looks like a scun rabbit sometimes, and Gosh, he's probably a bit bruised shit. in the head, and, yeah. you know, he's training, and he's, you know, he's, he's a real Spartan. He's running ultra marathons and doing all these things. And Daz probably looked at him and thought, there's, there's a guy who is torturing himself hmm. mentally, physically, emotionally to have this position. And I genuinely think he was sort of reaching out. Then when he got on air, he's just... I, if you actually watch it, you can see the cogs going around in Daz's mind while everyone was joking about the fight. And then I think he's, he's, he's lent into this and probably and not probably lent too far into it, and he sounded like he was being mean spirited. I think actually probably came from a good place in the first instance, and then he was too far down the track. It was just enjoyable to watch. It was, yeah. <laughs> it's a bit like saying, you know, yeah, you need the popcorn just yeah. as you're watching it unfold. People get, but people, they, they, everyone wants to be outraged these days. It's just, yeah, they're at the starters' gates for it. Yeah, they are. All right, back to Essendon. Uh, the Essendon Edge. Yeah, it was a bit blunt a bit on the blunt. weekend. <laughs> um, so the discussions come up regarding their drafting and, and development. So I'm a big believer 
they've got to be in equal parts. So yeah. as much as you can blame the recruiting and the drafting, well, then you've got to focus in on your development. Because why, why did Geelong keep getting up near the finals? Development. They've got Category B rookies. They've got a steeplechaser, a couple of Irish blokes. They've got Tom Stewart at pick 40, Henry at 40. That helps. Why do the Swans keep producing? They turn rookie list blokes into all Australian defenders, and they have an they have an academy where you can actually bring them through. Which is, yeah. and they do it well. That's they, not a knock. That's, they do it well. Sorry, before Sydney get onto me no, again. The, the Hawks did it for quite some time. Yep. Their development, they just kept bringing in players, and they're trying to go through that. The problem with the Bombers, I think you articulated it last night, is they've got too many of the same player. Yeah. We said this two years ago in Footy Classified when I think it was McGraw was coming out that they needed to make a pick between him and Merritt. I think and get one of them out, get some value for him and get somebody in because the, the move to the midfield is now, you know, Bonson and Pally, Cripps, Pendlebury's 6'3", mm. you know, the Goey's a bull in there. Um, you can have, obviously, mm. your Lockie Neals, who are fantastic players, and Sarong's been sensational this year, and all of those guys. Merritt is a great player, but you can't have too many of the same. Yeah. And as, as we see, they're not going down the ground and taking that mark and kicking that goal. They should have spent gather around looking at what the good sides did yeah. and it's transition and this is what I highlighted. They've got a lot of energy in attack. Yeah. You need that same kind of energy in defence and then the speed from your back half. Now footy more than ever, I sort of reference golf a bit. Golf moved to whatever the case is, take driver off the tee and solve your problems down there. Mm. That's the same now in footy. Get out of your back 50. Up that way. And solve your problems down there. If that yeah. means it's a throw in or a ball up you know, half forward, Get away from your goals as quick as possible. You watch how quick sides get out of their back 50 who are playing good footy. The other thing I think for the Bombers as well is they, they went into a draft which was the first one coming out of COVID. Yeah, the COVID draft. And was always going to be dangerous because we weren't quite sure. Because a lot of those kids didn't play any footy mm. or very little footy over that you know, key 16, 17, 18 year age group. Um, they came out, played well the first year, inevitably were injured the second year confidence goes these are kids who've always been the best and fairest suddenly you know but have a look at that draft found which a spot. I did. Yeah. who went after those three picks so yeah. we're talking cox perkins reed was the order yeah now cox was a 200 centimeter what have we got on our hands yeah and because you had the three picks you could take a a bit of a speculative one or what could it be perkins was a gun yeah i don't know you're always taking him and reed a 200 centimeter key defender yeah now he's had his injury worries but going past that you got Goulden at 30, which the Swans had in their academy. Academy, so they knew him and had been training And then there's probably Max Holmes at about yeah. pick 20. There's not much else yeah, in no, that draft. I, I, but Max Holmes played with my son. Hmm. So I saw there was two kids in the underage, uh, that underage It was year. picked more on athleticism. Yeah, well, the two yeah. kids who, in hmm. watching every week, kids playing footy who could play hmm. were James Robottom and Max Holmes. Hmm. And uh, they actually sort of played the, the way they do now. Yeah. Um, uh, they were always going to be AFL players. Yeah. Yeah, Max Holmes had the athleticism. You know, he was a great player. They play him on halfback flank. He'd run down, kick goals, and fast, and was a good player. And you know, but and and was a, a receiver mm. type of player in those days. I say that in the in the most positive way. He he just knew where to be and would get it. And choof, mm. Away you go. And Rowie was exactly the same as he is now. He just knew where to be. Look, like, he played like you in in under, underage, but positioning himself in the right spot, facing the right direction mm. at centre bounces and mm. bounces around. He just knew how to play, as opposed to kids you know mm. who, who run around. I just reckon with these kids, it's going to take them a little bit more development time and yes. I think a little bit more physical development time. And they've got to find a spot for these guys and let them play in it and build up their confidence. So I think I don't think they're a bust, these, those kids, by any stretch, but I think they might just... Uh, I think you've got to just take into account they missed a fair bit of the formative years of football. Yep, that, that and, COVID draft. And, uh, and don't, don't hope that these things go. You've got to think about it mm. and, and therefore you know, coach accordingly. Yep. Which I think the Bombs are doing. Yeah, they'll just take a bit of time, it, which I don't think it, Essendon supporters have much more time no, on their patience. Well, but they, but they have to. But, but this is always the thing, though, Jimmy. You can't blame these guys for the sins That's true. of 20 years ago. Hmm. Okay? Yeah, okay, they haven't been a final, they won a final for 20 years. But that's not, these kids weren't born. No. It's not their problem. No. Their, 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 their situation, we haven't been in a final since I've been here, which is 18 months. Okay? So just settle down on all that and... Uh, yeah, you know, they're heading in the right direction, the Bombers, I think. Yeah. Can, uh, Slowly, but they're uh, heading there. Can we go to an email? 
Yeah, sure. Email from Ben to Eddie. Now, oh. you can always email us, the Eddie and Jimmy. Are we vetting these emails, by the way? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. None yeah. from any of the Selwood family this week. <laughs> this, uh, one, this yeah. one's from Marie Selwood. Um, why do you hate my son? <laughs> no, no not at all. No, Marie, can I just, she's a lovely lady. Can probably. I just say this? You know, you know, and Joel knows that I've been a great supporter. And so there wasn't a knock on him. I'll underline it again. It was not about him. It was about personality empire. Joel, we're at the MCG every Monday if you want to come meet Eddie in the car park. Uh, no, this is from uh, Ben, in all seriousness. Uh, the Gather Round Spectacular on, on 9, which was fantastic. Thank Ed, you. Uh, there is, is there still a place for the footy show yeah. on TV? Yeah. I, I, look, again, when everyone was death riding the footy show, I said to the AFL, be careful what you wish for. Because the footy show actually was the show that brought the personality into football. Right? When we took over, when we started in 94, seven years before the AFL rights went for 750000 to the ABC and the ABC had to take them. No one wanted them. Okay? And then the commission came in and we got things going. At that stage, Channel 7 had a ban on any nicknames and the game was just going and it ended up on the ABC. It was horrible. Okay? And the, the game was gone to the VFL. Now... By the time we got going again and we brought the personality back into the game, which was much to what Lou Richards and, and Ron Casey and those guys did on World of Sport back mm. in the day, which Seven had axed at that stage. And Seven had gone... The, the prevailing wind in sport at that stage was to turn it into applied science. You know, so every, everything was very, mm. was very much, you know, uh, any, uh, analytical and... Uh, I think that's similar where we are now. We've got 8,000 shows with panellists saying the same thing over and over again, of which we sit on most of them. <laughs> but there's a lot of that. So I thought what we did the other night was I went back to the old days, a lot in it, but in a truncated form because it was, um, you know, there's a smaller, you know, it's not a show that's on every week. But we got in a lot of women. We got in the young players. You don't see the young players these days. We had some fun. We did some stunts. We got the supporters involved. And that's what the footy show was all about. I mean, I'd love to find Sam, you know, a role in there again or something, you know, just little things like that. Um, but that was just, a, this was a toe in the water and it's been really well received. Can I, can and I, I think we'll see a bit more. I don't know if you have it every week, but I think we should have more of them. Can I just sure. jump in there for a sec? Yeah, when the, the footy show in its final uh, two years, yeah. the ratings numbers of that compared yeah. to, that, that'd still be the number one rated show, yeah. wouldn't it? Yeah, the rating, well, the, the last show we did, with the grand final show. I came back for one year. Mm. Um, and by that stage, it was interesting when I came back. When we started it, it only worked because no one thought it would work, so they left us alone. No one wanted to be near it because mm. they didn't want to cop the failure, <laughs> except for uh, at that stage, it was Trev, me, Sam, Harvey Silver was the producer, and Ian Johnson was the, the bloke who was the godfather behind the scenes who backed us in to have a go. We got six weeks told you got six weeks this won't work people who worked on the show i heard overheard them say this is a pile of rubbish this will be no good how can you have anything without any vision because they were all looking at a traditional sports show sam and i were looking at it as a variety show mm. yeah, sam and i both grew up watching the dean martin show back in the you know in the in the days and we loved all that sort of stuff that's what we were doing and bert newton and graham kennedy and don lane and ernie sigley and that traditional studio nine so we weren't looking at doing a footy show at all we we're looking at a variety show with footy around it um, when I came back, uh, to be honest, the people in Sydney had their hands all over it. And people who shouldn't have been having any say had a lot of say. And the things that we wanted to do to revamp the show, we just couldn't get a run at it. And, and, it was, and by that stage, it was done. So it needed a break. Hmm. Um, I think what's been fantastic is uh, Mick and Sam Peng and Andy Ma yep. brought in front bar yep so that's been able to which was in a lot of ways a bit of a segment type of stuff of what the footy show and then the guys have turned this into something fantastic yeah, they've done a good and job. what they've done is they, so they they do they do a great thing and that, that is they keep a lot of the old stories alive mm. and it's wonderful where i reckon there is a hole in the market which i think we showed again the other day is um we want to see some of the young guys who are there now they're all they're doing a lot of stuff on instagram and everything but being on tv is great so i hope we can um, but uh, can I just say this? It has been really well received. I'm actually been a bit taken aback by how well it's been received. And thank you to our... Who was our emailer there? That was Ben. Ben, yeah. So I, Thanks, I hope so. I hope so. He says he wants to bring back the catchphrase, this is AFL on nine. Yeah, that was good delivery when you... Was, where were you standing? You were sort of... I was up in the, yeah. up in the bleachers. Yeah, I was up in the top deck. 
I haven't seen it back yet. It came up all right. It came up really well. Good. Delta smashed it. Isaac yeah. Rankin, which we on breakfast radio, we couldn't stop raving about. He was Isaac. great, wasn't he? If if you didn't know he was a footballer, you just think that's a musician. Like if you didn't know the name Isaac Rankin and associate him with Sons and the Crows, of course, you go, who's that bloke? Well, we we spoke about the background to it where he went singing yeah. in front of his teammates, and yeah. when he sang, he sang with his eyes shut because he just yeah. couldn't look at them. And they gave him a round of applause and us, and uh, he was too far. And so when he came in, we did a sound check on the day and his first he was sort of half strumming it and you know how you half yeah. sort of guess and luckily Paul Bell is uh, uh, you yeah. worked with Paul Bell yep. Paul Bell's a, a floor manager mm. Paul used to be the guitarist with Little Heroes so he actually mm. does know what he's doing and he said nah mate get in there you know Paul's a good knockabout bloke I know he hit those strings mm. come on he said, he said the strings are too tight make sure they're tuned to help mm. him tune it up and gave him a little bit of it. so he felt like he was there and what I did was then I, 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 we, I rolled in that goal, you know, that he kicked from the boundary line. Yeah. So instead of coming up and going, right, okay, you've Don't got to go sing. For it, yeah. Let's get him on happy ground. Here's a goal. Crowd goes berserk. Mm. I'm feeling good. Yeah, that's good. I'm, you know, a bit like watching your, your highlights when you're not getting a kick. Go and watch the highlights when you're playing well. Anyway, his teammates all turned up and he did two sound checks. And by the end of the third one, he actually said, I've got a second song. <laughs> so, one will do. We'll, yeah. get you, we'll get you back another time. Yeah, so he can't, was, I can't he, wait to hear that. He was grouse. Yeah. Bartel Metal, let's go. All what? right. Thanks to Crown Resorts. Crown, here's where things get interesting. And this is where it gets interesting because yeah. this is a prelude. <laughs> I noticed that I thought I had the, de- the deciding vote on the uh, Lexus prize on a Wednesday night, but it's suddenly you have. No, I just, I'm just a very good judge. Yeah, talent. okay. All right, so here you go with this one. <laughs> Nothing like uh, self-praise. Exactly. <laughs> um, Unless you know it's, it's sincere. <laughs> <laughs> you can't get any blowback from that. <laughs> um, it's tough to win because I go rogue, but I'm, I'm making it a bit interesting by adding more people to it. Right. So the best three players of the round. The best 33 players of the round. Yeah, go on. I'm not far off it, to be honest. Yeah, go on. Toby Green. I'm looking at my notes because I took notes for this. Toby Green, Jack Steele. Shea Bolton, Cameron and Petrarca all got one vote. Hang on, say that again. Toby Green. Jack Steele. Yeah. Shy Bolton. Yeah. Jeremy Cameron. Yeah. And Christian Petrarca. Okay. You well, can't geez. argue with those. No, I'm not arguing with those. I would have thought one of them might, might have won it. But no, anyway. because you two votes and both in a losing side. Oh, yeah, okay. Because this, this would have been my three, I reckon. Go Libba. On. Yeah. And the Bont. Oh, okay. Then there's still a chance for my three votes. Three votes, Connor Rosie. Okay, well... All right, who did I miss? Harley Reid. No. See, I would have given him three. Oh, you can't give him three. Over no, Connor well, Rosie. No, well, no, Connor, uh, no, Connor Rosie, tick, right? Yeah, he so, put it on a footy clinic. No, Connor <laughs> Rosie was fantastic. And yet again, you know why I was so wrapped that he played well? He was, he, was, he was on our show. <laughs> yeah, oh, he was too, yeah, yes. And just proved again that let people come on, have fun, mm. do things. He's an impressive type. Oh, yeah. Handsome, had everything going for him, speaks well. Yep. I thought, jeez... You're wasted at Port Adelaide, son. No, he, <laughs> no he, local kid. He's a beauty. King of South Australia. He is he absolutely be. sensational. He um, and Butters, oh my goodness. The only one I... I, I why I said Har- Harley Reid there, and that, that, that'll be my vote on Wednesday yeah. night, I'll declare it now. I'm not uh, diminishing Harley Reid's No, no, which is... Because the, the one on our Wednesday is a bit different. I look mm. at it from sort of an impact from a player taking into consideration outside influences. So last week I went with Max Gorn because Melbourne going over... Mm-hmm. If they lost that game, they're in trouble. As it turns out, they win it, and then they win both their games in South Australia. And they're on top of the ladder, and they've recalibrated their whole club. And I reckon it was off the back of mm. Max Gorn's game the week before. I thought it was had such a profound effect. Same with this. Free, uh, the West Coast Eagles, to me, are so shot going into last week's game that if they'd have been beaten completely Badly. annihilated, then they may as well have folded the tent up and, yep. yeah, and be gone for the next few years. Harley Reid who has had more pressure on him than any kid in the history of football coming into a team, stood up, oh. took on a gun team filled with midfield power. We've all got five, six years more experience oh, than Oh, and everything. And at 18 years of age, put on a, an absolute clinic and nearly carted this team mm. over the line against a team that was throwing everything at them. You know, multi-finalists, grand finalists last year, everything happening, all the pressure. They were going to come out and bully the West Coast Eagles. But one bloke stood there, an 18-year-old with number nine on his back, and just said, yeah, try and bully me. Oh. I just I loved it. I thought it was fantastic. It was oh. so exciting. That's, that's why I go to the footy, to see blokes <laughs> like him. 
But oh, I, love I think the number it was either seven or nine, but he holds a record yeah. over the first four games. Broken tackles. Yeah, you know, he reminds me of another number nine, and that was Paddy Cripps. When Paddy Cripps mm. first came to Carlton, and he was had to carry 17 mm. spuds on his back every <laughs> week and and take on everyone. That's why he kept getting more tape put on well, him. Well, that's why he was, because he was getting dragged down, <laughs> he was getting hit, he was getting bashed, he was doing everything, and just was a sensational player. I, I loved him, but I don't disagree with your three votes for Well, Connor do you know what you can do, Ed? On Wednesday night, you're the, you're the judge. You can just change the result on Wednesday. <laughs> it's not the first time somebody said, you know what you can do, Ed. <laughs> <laughs> you can do what Ross Glenn Denning did that time oh, when he presented the t- award. Totally agree. That was so funny. Do you remember that? Yeah. When, um, what's, uh, it's the Glenn Denning Award yeah, over there. Yeah, Glenn and Alan. Alan. Yeah, it was Alan. Glenn Denning at that stage. Though. Yeah. yeah. And uh, they handed the envelope and go, this is who's won the award. And he's looked at and goes, no. <laughs> he's no, not getting my no, medal. He's not getting, <laughs> <laughs> I'm giving the award too. Yeah. yeah well, was, that's what it should be. Hmm. I actually half agree with that. I mean, sometimes, because these days, the, the, the people who are awarding these medals, you wouldn't ask them to go buy the pies. I mean, there's the people from AFL media and bits and pieces <laughs> and things like that. I'd rather Ross Glendening. Oh, it's his medal. It's his medal. But it's, I'd, like to, I'd like to see for those medals, I'd like to see a, a various panel of exalted superstars being brought back to the game. So, for example... Um, Anzac Day medal, I would like to see um, Simon Madden, um, yep. you know, somebody, you know. Simon James Prestigio Como. Simon Prestigio Como, James Clement or somebody, yeah. who, you know, those guys. You know, maybe you get James Clement and James Hurd who, you know, well, Jimmy Clement's on the board of, of Fremantle now, so we've, we'll have to excommunicate him until <laughs> he comes back into the fold. But you know what I mean? Yeah, Joe Mercedes and yeah. Mark McCurry Get for guys who've won it, who yeah. know what it's all about, and then you celebrate them. Hmm. Rather than getting somebody who's trying to call a game and, and write it all down at the one time, and you know, and I've been that person, so you know, I said for both, I voted twice on a Norm Smith, hmm. and uh, gave it to the same person twice, Andrew McLeod. Geez, he was good. Kane Johnson must have been close in those two. He, he was, was very good. and and Jarman, the Jarman family had never given me, <laughs> so. I've got, I've got the Jarmans and now the Selwoods. <laughs> I think they'd give you some feedback, the Jarmans. Oh, I said the Selwoods. <laughs> yeah, they're good people. Um, but, uh, yeah, I remember that because we had to give the, I had to give the votes at the five-minute mark of the last quarter. Imagine giving a, a prestigious award like the Norm Smith medal mm. three quarters into a game. Mm. Anyway, um, that's where it is. But anything else you want to talk about? No. No, I think we, we wrapped it all pretty good. Remember to send all your questions through, listeners. We love taking them. Can I get... I just want to have re, rewind over one thing. Okay. Tell me why getting rid of touch off the boot would make a scintilla of difference given the fact that the evidence now is that there are so many of these touched off the boot that no one sees. Let's put that up on social media and see what yeah. our listeners have yeah. to say. I, I agree. Yeah. Yeah. I don't want to be changing rules all the time. Yeah. But also, what we do tend to do is we exacerbate rules by putting more rules in place. Less rules. Unintended consequences happen. Unintended consequences. Yes. See, I'm very big on it. It's a very simple game for simple people, enjoyed by simple people like me. <laughs> can't hit them in the head, can't trip them, can't push them in the back. Kick more goals than they do. That's it. And we're just about home. Yep. Yep. It's been good, Ed. Thanks, mate. Yeah. All right, Jimmy, uh, where do I see you tomorrow? Uh, tomorrow three W breakfast? Three W breakfast. Yeah. Here's a call. And then okay. Wednesday, footy classified, yeah. where I think I already know the winner of the Lexus no, uh, no, for the no. round by the sound. No, I think, it, well, I think Connor Rose, he, he, he's the three voter by a mile. But uh, you know, at least we'll, we, we can argue the point for somebody other than midfielders, yep. even though we've all both gone with midfielders in that <laughs> situation. Um, well done, mate. It was great. Uh, get involved with us, uh, Facebook or X. And don't forget, Crown Resorts. Crown, here's where things get interesting. And as I said, Lexus Blackburn, they've got that ripping new car and it's uh, it's got everything. It's like a spaceship inside and at a really affordable price and nice and compact, good for parking around town, good mileage, got everything going for it. It's an absolute belter. It's a beauty. Good on you, mate. Yeah.